Getting started with the whole hog operating system, part two. After launching a show, you'll be presented with three interfaces, the front panel and two windows that represent the left and right monitors of the whole hog. In hog three PC, these windows can be moved around your screen anywhere you like. They can also be resized by clicking and dragging any of the corners. Other options specific to HOG3 PC can be accessed by right-clicking on these windows or on the front panel. The Workspaces menu gives us a second drop-down with the options of Front Panel, Programmer, and Playback. Clicking on Programmer will display only the programming section of the front panel on my screen. If I select the playback option, the playback section will be displayed separate from my programming section. This allows you to move these halves of the front panel anywhere you need, including another monitor. Selecting front panel will rejoin the two halves. To reset all window locations, click default positions. Lock front panel position will hold our front panel in place on the screen. Toggle front panel will open and close the front panel. Selecting show all will bring all of our interfaces back. Below are also options to minimize or maximize the currently selected window or minimize all windows of the program. The quit option allows us to log out of the show file or quit the program. This front panel is a PC visualization of the front panel found on our consoles. On your computer, you can click the console keys, use the eye wheel and rate wheel, move faders, choose masters, trigger cues, and more. To use the virtual encoder wheels, click on the wheel you wish to spin, drag your mouse up to turn the wheel to the right, or down to turn to the left. Holding your computer's shift key will allow you to click on multiple buttons at once, which is especially useful with a lot of our shortcuts. The right side of the front panel displays a virtual trackball. When clicking it, it will turn blue, meaning it can be used to pan and tilt your moving lights. This indicator will tell us when the trackball is in position mode and when it's in mouse mode. Also, pressing your computer's pause break key will toggle your keyboard into map mode, allowing you to use HOG3 PC keyboard shortcuts. See your HOG manual for a complete list of these shortcuts. Here we'll look at our left monitor in detail. At the top of this window is our Views toolbar. Views allow us to quickly open any number of windows on the console in the size and placement of our choice. At the bottom is our playback bar. This bar gives us shorthand information about the data recorded to our masters on the current page. This could be scenes, cue lists, inhibitive faders, and more. Now let's look at our right monitor. At the top, we'll find our Windows Control Toolbar beginning with the Help button. This button will open up an on-screen HOG3 manual. I can close this window by clicking the X button in the top right corner or by clicking the close button in the Windows Control Toolbar. To work with other options for the Windows Control Toolbar, I'll need to open up a new window. These buttons will only affect the active fronted window. Our fronted window will be the group directory. The up, down, left, and right buttons allow you to page through the active window. The split button will make a copy of the original window. The Size button will change the active window size and move it around the screen. To move the window from one monitor to another, I'll need to click Move. To make the window full screen, I'll click Maximize. The Focus option changes our active window selection. Lock allows us to grab the window and drag it around on the screen. Close will, of course, close the current window. At the bottom of our right monitor is our main toolbar. This is a dynamic toolbar and the options displayed here will change depending on the action that you're performing. Above that is our command line. The selections and commands we type into the console will be displayed here. We've already looked at our trackball and keyboard status indicators. Next is our current page, the active editor, the currently chosen master, and the network status and time. 
Above the command line is our encoder wheel set. Displayed here are the parameters that are currently associated with our encoder wheels. As I turn an encoder wheel, I will see the values changing here. The slotted toolbar allows us quick access to slotted functions of the fixture that we're programming. These could be parameters like gobos or colors. The slotted toolbar also allows us access to the control parameters of a fixture. Now let's take a look at the control panel. To open this window, I'll first need to press the setup key. Now we can find the control panel button on our main toolbar. It's good to know that you can always determine the software version that your console is running from looking at the title bar of the control panel. Right now we're looking at the displays section of the control panel. This window allows us to configure the external monitors on our consoles or in HOG3 PC we can open up new windows. To do this, I'll first click the Enable button, and then I can select a resolution for my new monitor. Click Apply to have these settings take effect. In HOG3 PC, I can take this new window and drag it anywhere I want, including to an external monitor. To disable the third window, I'll uncheck Enable by clicking it again, and then I'll click Apply. The Wings section of the control panel allows us to configure playback wings to our console. Make sure that your wing is connected to the console and click one of the drop-down menus. Your wing is designated by an individual ID number that's unique to that wing. Once assigned, clicking the blue light bulb will cause the LEDs on your wing to flash, letting you know that it's been configured properly. This button will toggle the playback bar for your wing on or off. MIDI assigns the input and output to physical MIDI ports. On the console, these are already assigned as they're built in. In HOG3 PC, here you can configure your own USB to MIDI device. Here we can set up our time and our date and our time zone. This is really important for the clock triggers option in your queue lists. In Auto Launch, you can select a particular show file to be launched when the whole HOG system starts up. You can also select a delay time. The network window is used to configure your network adapter and choose IP settings. The system info screen gives you information about your OS and hardware system. To apply these settings and close the control panel, I can click OK. Keep in mind that the control panel on your console may not have the same options shown in this video. Consult your console's manual to learn about the options available for your whole hog.